So today I want to talk about energy in simple harmonic motion. So if you haven't already, I strongly suggest you check out the previous videos about simple harmonic motion, namely the video that tells you about the basics of what simple harmonic motion is. It will make it much easier to understand this. So energy in simple harmonic motion. Um, by, by now, you should probably know that a simple harmonic motion object goes through a lot of different stages. Um, let's say that we're talking about this one right here. This is the equilibrium position. We could very much say that the central position is the equilibrium position. When it's at its maximum displacement from the equilibrium position, it has zero velocity, and then it starts accelerating, and it has the highest velocity at its equilibrium position, and then it goes to its other maximum position, maximum displacement, where it also has zero um, velocity for an instant, right? So it's that instantaneous rest. So this allows us to talk about the different energy changes for kinetic energy. It's obviously moving, so we have like different kinetic energies that we can observe. If we have the highest motion in the equilibrium position, then that means the kinetic energy is at maximum at the center. If we have zero zero velocity at the maximum positions, then that means that the kinetic kinetic energy of the, the object is zero when it's at its maximum positions. Now we can also talk about potential energy. And potential energy, maybe right now, we could talk about this as elastic potential energy, but there's a lot more. Um, for example, the molecules vibrating, that's because of the chemical uh, forces that pull themselves together, right? And that is also a form of potential energy, which is basically just energy that you get because of your position. So you have different types of forces, but in this specific um, example, we have the springs and they have elastic potential energy. At this equilibrium position, the, um, the springs have like zero strain and therefore that means that there is no potential energy in the equilibrium position. However, at this position, they have the most strain. So for example, this one will be squashed the most, and this one will be stretched the most. So we say that at the maximum positions, the potential energy is the greatest. And we can also prove that um, at the equilibrium position, there is no energy for potential energy whatsoever, because at the equilibrium position, the force, the force that restores this sort of uh, object to the equilibrium position equals to zero. Because remember that this force is directly proportional to the displacement from the equilibrium position. And the displacement right now is going to be zero, which means force is going to be zero. If there's the force is zero, then this has no tendency to move, which means they have no energy. So now that we've got that out of the way, we can take a look at these statements. During simple harmonic motion, there is a constant interchange of kinetic energy and potential energy. At the equilibrium position, kinetic energy is at a maximum and potential energy is at a zero, as we've just seen before, because maximum velocity is at the equilibrium position. Provided that the oscillations are undamped, and we're going to talk about that in the next video, uh, the total energy in the system will remain constant. So. This is kind of what it is. If we can somehow, if we can somehow graph the energy to time together, then we would get something like this. So we can see that um, the potential energy, which is in blue, is oscillating up and down, and up and down. And for kinetic energy, it is also oscillating up and down, but it is the flipped version. So that when we actually add them together up, we're always going to get the same line, which gives us the constant total energy. So it tells us that if you don't have things like friction, that's taking the energy away, making heat. Um, so in this theoretical world, it's going to look like this. The energy is going to remain constant, but the types of energy is going to be constantly interchanging. So let's look at this graph a little better. We know that um, kinetic energy has its maximum in the equilibrium position. So when the kinetic energy is here, this is at its equilibrium position. This is at its equilibrium position. 
We know that the potential energy is at its peak when it's at the maximum positions. So this is maximum position number one, number one, and this is probably the next one, which is the negative maximum position. And then this is probably the next one, the positive maximum position. Now, obviously, when the potential energy is at its lowest, it's going to be at the equilibrium position, as we've seen before. And obviously, if this thing is at the maximum displacement, the kinetic energy is also going to be zero for an instant. So now that we kind of figured out what these things represent, we can actually even link this to a displacement time graph of a, uh, an object in simple harmonic motion. So... In simple harmonic motion, the motion will typically be you go here once, come back, and then you come to the original position. That is one cycle, which means let's start with um, this position right here. So this position is when the, it's at its equilibrium position. Kinetic energy is the highest and the potential energy is at the lowest for an instant. It goes to the maximum displacement, that's the maximum displacement, comes back to the original displacement, we're at the original displacement again, goes to the um, other end, which is, this is the other end, and then finally it comes back to the equilibrium position. So if we can extend this a bit more, we would get something like this, right? And so this is where it ends. This is the equilibrium position, right? So that is one cycle. So if we can actually trace this a little better, we've just concluded that we can, you know, extend this a little bit further, extend this a little bit further, and that's the ending point. And this is the starting point. Now look at this really carefully, because we can see that the kinetic energy goes through two cycles. You can see that. That's two cosines. And it's the same for... Um, potential energy so let's just extend that again and this is the starting point one two so what we've just been able to prove is that when an object goes through one oscillation like this there are actually two cycles of the energies that change within each other so that's how that came up within one complete oscillation in terms of the displacement there are in terms of energy two different interchanging cycles. They interchange twice. We can also represent this in this way. So this is basically a graph where we basically have like the displacement over here. This is when the displacement is zero. This is when it's a positive displacement, negative displacement. Obviously this is the displacement from the equilibrium position. If we had a block and a spring, and this was the equilibrium position. And then let's say we kind of stretched it so that the block was here. Then the displacement would be the distance between the equilibrium and its center. This is the thing that we're talking about when it comes to this axis. We've basically plotted this against the energy. And we can very clearly see what I've just explained to you, which is that when the displacement is zero, the kinetic energy is at its highest point. Remember, the red is the kinetic energy. It's at its highest, but the potential energy is completely at zero. And when it's at either maximum displacements, that's the maximum displacement number one, that's the maximum displacement of the negative side, the potential energy is at its highest, but the kinetic energy is at zero. So we can talk about this, and when we add it together, it still gives us one straight line, which is the total energy. So if we were to add the displacement of this, and then the displacement of this together, we would basically get this displacement. That's how the total energy can be put up there. And this is a bit inaccurate. The, the top of the kinetic energy and this should actually be intersecting. It's a tangent. So that's basically how that graph came up. So kinetic energy is maximum when displacement is x equals 0. Potential energy is the maximum when displacement is plus minus maximum displacement. So whenever it is maximum displacement, doesn't matter if it's at the right or at the left side, it's going to be the maximum potential energy. And at any point on the graph, the total energy has the same value. So that's about it for the energy of 
um, oscillations and simple harmonic motion. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about damping and what it is. And in the following video, I'm also going to link these two together to talk about resonance. So keep updated for that. And thank you so much for watching.